If you don't do it, nothing is possible. If you try to do it, at least you have the hope. You had that third failure in a row. Mm -hmm. Did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. So many things go wrong when you're starting a company, and often I think people ask, you know, what mistakes uh, should you avoid making? And, you know, my answer to that question is don't even bother trying to avoid mistakes because you're going to make tons of mistakes, right? And the, the, um, the important thing is actually learning quickly from whatever mistakes you make and not giving up. Right, and I mean, there, there are things every single year of Facebook's existence that could have killed us or made it so that it, it just seemed like moving forward and making a lot of progress just seemed intractable, but you just kind of bounce back and you learn and um, nothing is impossible. You just have to kind of keep running through the walls. It's hard changing your life. It was hard when just over three years ago in the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan, where I was operating my business and I fell on some hard times and I was sleeping in my office. It was hard coming into the lobby and the security said, excuse me, Mr. Brown, can we see you for a moment? And I said, yes. And I walked up to the counter and he gave me an envelope and he said, would you mind reading it here? And I opened the envelope and the envelope was from management that said, this is an office tower. It's not a hotel. Please do not sleep in your office. And I said, excuse me, sir. I said, I just work long hours in creating my business. I'm an entrepreneur. And right now things are bad for me, but they're not going to be this way always. And I just asked for the opportunity to continue to operate like I'm doing. I'm not trying to make this my home. And it was hard coming through the lobby. And sometimes they would laugh. There's a guy talking about becoming successful. And look at him. He's bathing in the bathroom upstairs on the 21st floor. He sleeps on the floor. Him and two other dreamers up there. Look at him. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people. And I was facing financial difficulties in my own life. I was behind on my bills and my dreams, and I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. It was very difficult to pick myself up each day believing that I could do it. There were times that I doubted myself. I said, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm just trying to take care of my children and my mother. I'm not trying to steal or rob from anybody. How did this have to happen to me? It was very hard. And here's what I want to say to you. For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on, by continuing to push forward, by continuing to run toward my dream, that one day I would have my own talk show. It's a long shot, ladies and gentlemen, from Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot. Being here with you today in this dome in Atlanta, it's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded, but I kept running toward my dream. You tried to get into three colleges. Mm -hmm. Each time they rejected you. No, I, I try. There's an examination that young people, if you want to go to university, you have to taste, take the examinations. So I failed three times. Right. But I had a lot of fail. I failed for funny things that I failed a key primary school test for two times. And I failed uh, um, like a two, three times for the middle school, middle schools. And uh, you, you will never believe in, in Hangzhou, my city, there's only one middle school that last only one year. It was changed from primary school to middle school because our graduates of our, our, our school, no, univer you, no middle school accept us because we were too bad. What effect did it have though, um, being rejected? Well, I think we have to get used to it. We're not that good. Even today, we still have a lot of people reject us. I think, um,
When I uh, in the, graduated from universities, and before I, you know, for three years I tried to fill in the universities. So I applied jobs for 30 times, got rejected. I went for a police, they said, no, you're not good. I went to even the uh, KFC. When KFC came to China, come to my city, 20, 24 people went for the job. 23 people accepted. I was the only one guy. And we went for police. Five people, four of them accepted. I was the only guy that I rece received it. So to me, being turned down, rejected. Oh, by the way, I told you that I, would, I applied for Harvard for 10 times rejected. Nothing works the first time. When you try something new, it probably won't work. When you try something new several times, it probably won't work. And the turning point in my life came when I would hear good ideas and I was so eager to be successful in selling, I would run out and try the ideas and they wouldn't work. I'd try a way of getting an appointment or over answering an objection or closing a sale, it wouldn't work. And my natural response, ah, oh, and I think just to be disappointed. And then I realized nothing works, at least the first few times. So I decided I would try a new idea five or 10 times before I passed judgment on it. I would not just try it once and quit like most people do, and that changed my whole life. It was a turning point in my life because I realized from then on, if you've got a good idea and you've got a good goal and you want to double your income and improve the quality of your life and you have to try new things in order to get new results, it's not going to work the first time. So you say, well, that didn't work. Try something else and try something else and try something else. Now, if you try, only two things can happen. What are they? Succeed or fail. If you succeed, you do more of it. If you fail, you learn from it, get smarter, and try it again. So you cannot lose by taking action. You can only lose by not taking action. Practice faithful persistence means never, ever, ever give up. Chicken Soup for the Soul was rejected by 144 publishers. 144 publishers said, we don't want to publish a collection of short stories. Uh, the title, stupid, Chicken Soup for the Soul, what does that mean? People don't buy um, collections of short stories. There's never been, you know, successful uh, chain of doing that. So literally, we spent 14 months trying to find a publisher. And we'd go to New York with our agent, and eventually our agent gave us the book back and said, I can't sell this. So we went to the National Booksellers Association Convention down in Anaheim. We went from booth to booth to booth for three days. And there were 4,000 publishers represented there. And we go, would you publish our book? Would you publish our book? Would you publish our book? And we got no, 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 no. It was late on the third day that a little publisher from Florida, after we'd gotten over 144 rejections, said, we'll read it. And then they said, um, we said, well, how many copies do you think we'll sell? After they said, yeah, we'll buy it. A couple weeks later, they said, we'll publish it. And we, they said, well, maybe 20,000 if we're lucky. And we said, we, our goal is to sell a million and a half in a year and a half. Now, have you ever told someone your dream and had them laugh out loud at you? <laughs> he laughed out loud. Now, if we had given up after 100 publishers had said no, I wouldn't be standing here today. You know, wouldn't have happened. And so you've got to be willing to persevere. Because we didn't take no. See, when the world says no, you say next. Let's practice that. If I say no, you say? Yes. Absolutely. There's only five or six billion people out there you can go and ask, right? There's over 4,000 publishers just here in the state of California. So what we have is this endless possibility, but you have to persevere. It's as if the universe tests our commitment. And so today we have 147 titles in print. We sold over 115 million copies. We're in 47 languages. And over a billion dollars worth of chicken soup for the soul books have been sold worldwide. So if you're willing to decide what you want, believe it's possible, consciously envision the future, feel the feelings of what it would feel like if you had achieved this goal, you can have anything, and then you take action, both obvious actions and inspired actions. You can do anything.